So the strategy in statistical process control is to raise quality by reducing variability. So the first thing we have to admit is that all processes result in some variability. No matter what it is that you are producing, there's going to be some variation in what you produce. So our first task is to try to make that variability predictable. We can't get rid of it, but we can try and make it be consistent. And yes, I understand predictable variability sounds like a contradiction, but it really, really isn't. Statistical process control is founded in some work by Edward Deming, who helped Japan improve the quality of their manufacturing processes after World War II. There are basically two tenets to his philosophy. The first is that quality and productivity increase as variability decreases. So if we can reduce the variability, we will improve quality and productivity. But he also understands that uh, everything varies. There's always some variation. So we need a set of statistical techniques that allow us not only to measure that variability, but also to understand the causes of that variability. So this chart is showing a process where variability is not predictable. So what this is showing is over time, we look at groups of whatever it is that we're measuring. And each group, we plot the frequency of, of the values. And you can see that over time, the range of those possible values is changing. So that's saying that our variability is not predictable. And we call a process where variability is not predictable out of control. This chart is showing a process where variability is predictable. Each group of things that we look at over time has the same range of possible values. So it isn't that every time we measure, we get the exact same thing. It's that every time we measure, we know the range in which the value is going to be. A process where variability is predictable is called an in-control process. So once we have our process in control, which means that our variability is predictable, then we can measure the process before and after changes and be able to do a statistical analysis to see the impact of changes that we make to the process. This means that now we can start looking at what is the process, how are we doing things, and can we change the process in ways that will reduce the variability? So we're going to be asking, can we do the job more consistently and still be on target? And we'll be able to do statistical analysis to check to see whether changes to the process are actually improvements or not. So a lot of organizations will have a separate group that monitors quality. But that quality group is not responsible for quality. The people who are executing the process need to be responsible for the quality of the process. So as engineers, we need to own the process that we're using to produce whatever product we're producing. And we need to be responsible for the quality of the, that process and equally the quality of what that process produces. So that means that we need to have tools that tell us whether the process that we're using is capable of meeting the requirements. Uh, we need to know at this particular moment is the process meeting the requirements. And we need to have the way to know how do we correct or adjust the process or the things coming into the process when it is not meeting its requirements. So when we talk about quality, there are a bunch of different aspects that we can use to study our process. The first question is, is the process capable? Can we do the job in a way that meets the requirements? The second question is, is the process in control? Are we doing the job correctly? Have we controlled that variation? There is a quality assurance question. Have we job, done the job correctly? And that's going to be looking backwards. That's inspections and reviews of what we've done to verify that we did do the job correctly. 
And then we're always going to be thinking about, could we do the job better? Because we're always wanting to improve the process.